Chrome DevTools are packed with features, but not all of those are enabled by default. In this video, I will share some fantastic experimental features that you should enable immediately to improve your CSS development workflow. To enable a certain experiment in Chrome DevTools, first you have to, well, open DevTools. So I'm going to do that. And you're going to find experiments if you go into settings here and then open experiments tab. Here is the list of all the experiments that are available. There's quite a lot of them, as you can see, and I would definitely encourage you to check them yourself and see if there's something useful you find in there. And if you do, make sure to share that in the comments below. I'd love to check out some other experiments that I might have missed. There is actually a much simpler way to open experiments panel using the command palette in DevTools. I will close this. And to open command palette, you can use the command shift P shortcut, or on Windows, this should probably be control shift P. And here you just have to search for experiments. As you can see, command show experiments is available. So if I hit enter, this will immediately switch me to experiments. And now if I just hit tap, I can immediately jump to the filter right here and find exactly what I'm looking for. And the first thing that I want to show you is CSS linked ordering. So I'll search for that, linked. I will enable this checkbox, linked ordering in styles pane. I'll close this and I will have to reload the DevTools. Whenever you enable or disable certain experiment, you will probably have to reload your DevTools, so make sure to do that. And now if you select an element that has a length property, something like width or height or similar, you're going to be able to see the difference. And as I don't have a length property in this demo, I will just quickly add one to my container element right here. Inline size is going to be 35 RAM units. And inline size is, of course, a logical equivalent of width property. If you don't know how logical properties work, check out my video on logical CSS properties. In any case, now that we've enabled this experiment, you're going to see that every length value, when you hover it, does two things. First one is this toggle right here that enables you to switch immediately to a different length unit. So from RAM, we can switch to M units or we can switch to something entirely different like viewport width units. This is sort of handy, but what really is handy is if you hover over a number 35 here, you're going to see that my cursor turns into an arrow that allows me to click and drag left and right. And as you can see, this is really handy if you just want to quickly tweak certain length values or if you want to adjust an element to exactly the right size. This demo was actually created from my other video on using has pseudo class. And here you see that we've set flexbox on our body element. And we also using align items and justify content properties. What if we switch this to display block? Now, obviously design is going to change a little bit, but the deal here is that align items and justify content properties no longer work because they're associated with flexbox and they don't do absolutely anything when you're working with display block. And this is exactly where our second tip, where our second experiment comes in. So I will again, open my experiments panel. I will search for hints. I will enable CSS authoring hints for inactive rules, deprecated properties, and so on. All right, I will reload my developer tools. And now on my body element where we have display block, you can see that align items and justify content are grayed out. And they are grayed out because they don't apply in this particular case. And if you hover over this icon information, you're going to see exactly why are they grayed out and why they don't work in this particular example. So as you can see, this is a really helpful experiment that you should enable immediately. I will switch this to flex again. And the next thing that I want to show you is font editor. So again, I will open my experiments panel and in my filter, I will search for font and I will enable new font editor tool within the styles pane. After I reload my dev tools here in the styles pane, you will see now that every selector that has a certain font property, like this one has a font size and font family has this new icon right here. And this is actually the font editor we enabled. So if I click it, we will get this nice pop-up that allows you to tweak very easily everything about the font. So as we really messed up this design, I will quickly jump into my changes panel and I will just reverse all the changes that I made in the DevTools. All right. The next experiment that you should enable is related to colors. If I click on any of the colors in my styles panel, maybe this one, this beautiful color picker will open and it works really great, but there is a one significant downside with it. And this is related to the eyedropper tool that we have right here. If I click it, I'm able to select a color from the page, as you can see right here, maybe the swipe one. But the problem is this works only within HTML of the page. So if I wanted to select a color from DevTools or from my other window, maybe from Figma or from Photoshop, if you have multiple windows open and you just want to really quickly select a color that is 
already present in your design that you're working on, then you can't do that. Well, this is exactly what this experiment will help you achieve. So I'll open experiments again. And I will search for color. And here you see enable color picking outside the browser window. I will click this, reload my dev tools. And now if I open my color picker, I will be able to pick colors that are not just within the page, but also outside of the page from dev tools from a different window from anywhere that you want. So this is definitely an experiment that I would recommend you enable. The next experiment that you should enable is related to accessibility. I'll open experiments again, and I will search for contrast. And here is an option to enable new advanced perceptual contrast algorithm. And this, as you can see, replaces the previous contrast ratio of AA slash AAA guidelines. And this new algorithm works better and gives better accessibility hints on what is accessible and what isn't accessible. So if you enable this, when you're working with the things that are related to accessibility within the DevTools, you will actually be able to get better, more accessible results. I've overloaded my DevTools now. And if I select one of the list items here, I can click on this color white. And if I scroll down and this color picker, I'll see the contrast information. Currently, there's no contrast information available because the browser can't always figure out what the background for a certain item is. But if we set background on this selector itself, maybe to something like Rebecca purple, then after I open the color picker again, you're going to see contrast ratio. As you can see, this contrast is good enough. And this is, of course, now based on the new algorithm and not the old one that was developed a long, long time ago. So enabling this experiment will help you build a little bit more accessible experiences. And the last experiment that I want to show you is source order viewer. So I will open experiments panel again and search for source. Here you have source order viewer toggle. I will enable it and reload my dev tools as always. And this is again related to accessibility. And you're going to find it here in the accessibility pane. Show source order. This will show you source order for DOM elements. Now, this is mostly relevant when you're dealing with properties that change the order of elements or as they appear on the page. So here we're dealing with this particular list. I will find it in my elements panel, you will. And if I select it, you see that every item is designated. This is item number one in my source order, number two, and so on and so on. But what happens if we actually switch this to Flexbox and reverse the order? So I'll set display to flex and flex direction is going to be column reverse. And now list items are reversed and source order viewer is showing me exactly source order for dump elements. So if I were to change the order of one of those items to one, you're going to see now that item number one is four, item number two is eight, and so on and so on. Enabling this source order viewer will help you understand better what the accessibility aspects of certain change are. In this example, if we try using tabs on this page, you're going to see that the first item that is selected is this item with the source order number one, then number two, number three, number four, and so on. So this will help you catch certain accessibility problems. And of course, when you do, make sure to fix those problems. So these are Chrome Developer Tools experiments that I wanted to show you. They have been really helpful for me. I'm using them constantly and hopefully you will use them too. And they will, they should improve your Chrome DevTools workflow. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Oran Yambor. I will see and hear you in the next Chrome DevTools experiment or rather in the next video.